All right, good morning, everyone. Um, so I'm going to, yeah, as you said, I'm Devin from the Max Planck, so just a bit north here, of here in Germany, over the border. Uh, so today I'm going to start out by talking about basically my own personal hell, that is uh, installing software. So I work in a core facility like a lot of you guys. Um, we have 200 plus wet lab scientists that we work with, and a lot of them are doing their own analyses. And of course, they need lots of crazy software packages with 50 bajillion versions of each one installed that they constantly want to change. And they often are trying to do all of this installation and stuff themselves. And these are smart, very capable people, but they're often still running into lots of problems. And they then come to us and ask us for help. So this happens a couple times a week. And usually these, the issues that they're running into is that they they need to install dependencies, but of course, on our cluster, we're not going to give them root access. We'd have to be crazy to do this. Um, or, and then they'll have to, yeah, so they'll have these dependencies. They can't install them. They can't compile them themselves. So we have to deal with all of this. Inevitably, we'll have multiple conflicting versions of these things that just don't work at all together. And there has to be a better way than, you know, coming up with crazy VM solutions to get things to compile. No, there, there's got to be a better way around this. Well, there is, and I'm here today to bring you the good news that there's a conda uh, and, and that we can all use it. So what is this conda thing? Um, it's very easy to use, it's trivial to install, and the best thing about it is that you don't need root at all, ever, for anything. And no, I'm not joking. Um, and also, you, as an end user, don't have to compile anything, which is wonderful, because this is just a nightmare for most people. Uh, and also, the dependencies are all handled for you. If you have multiple conflicting versions of things that shouldn't really work well together, no worries. Conda has your back. Um, and uh, wonderfully, this is updated very frequently. So whenever, I don't know, someone comes up with a new version of Salmon or Star or whatever, probably within a day or two, it's available in Conda. So you don't have to wait for your packages, I don't know, uh, apt or yum or whatever to get updated, which happens you know, once a year or something, it seems. And then you're always uh, drastically far behind. Um, so like I said, yeah, the, uh, Conda has all the packages you need. So there are various channels of packages. So these you can think of as, I don't know, stores from which you can buy things. So the two big ones are basically ConduForge and BioConda. ConduForge really specializes on a lot of these dependencies. So Python, SciPy, all the CRAN, well, maybe not all the CRAN packages, but about 2,000 of them. And then on the BioConda side, we have things like SAM tools and STAR. A lot of the Python packages you need are C packages you need. And increasingly, all these channels are collaborating with each other so that everything can be intermingled nicely and it's nicely compatible. And of course, if you're in a group that has your own software, you can have your own channel. It's free. It's easy to use. You just upload pa your packages to it, and then uh, users elsewhere in the world can install it, um, the same as everything else. Super convenient. And of course, the cool kids use it, and therefore you obviously should too. So if you ever use SnakeMake or NextFlow, and you'll see a talk later or a demo, I guess, from NFCore, so that's also NextFlow. These are all people that are using it, CJT. Galaxy's been using it for a couple years now. And increasingly, a lot of us uh, who administer clusters are also using it. So when our users module load some tool, it's actually activating a conda environment behind the scenes, which is super convenient. Um, and the wonderful thing about this, like I said, you can have multiple versions of things that then, of course, conflict. This is a real pain in the butt to set up if you're doing it manually on your own cluster. But Conda does this for you. It has this concept of environments. And these are really self-contained directory structures where you can have uh, packages in them that have libraries and all the linking is taking place within this defined directory structure, which is quite convenient so that things uh, across versions aren't conflicting with each other. And then it tries to reuse uh, files uh, to not use up too much of your disk quota so that your central IT doesn't get too mad at you, where there's basically a central repository of all these packages that, are, that you're using. And then when you create one of these new environments, it's simply hard linking things in. So you're not duplicating files over again and again and again. But of course, it's not just Python and C stuff. We do a lot more than that. Uh, so this is this sort of BioCon star uh, concept. So for the last six or nine months or so, we've been packaging all of BioConductor. So every time BioConductor comes out with a new release, we automatically start generating about 3,000 BioConductor packages, which is super useful because we like to integrate things with SnakeMake or NextFlow or whatnot. And then, of course, we inevitably need some bioconductor package to finish up our analysis. 
analysis, and we can automate all of that, all the deployment for that. But of course, uh, not everyone is able to simply use these packages. A lot of you need to use, I don't know, Docker or Singularity containers. Well, we deal with that too. The wonderful thing about Bioconda is for every package that's made, there's a bio container, which is a Singularity or Docker container made free for you on the fly. You don't have to do anything, it's just done, it's there. And we have built infrastructure uh, to support you and support us. Because of course there are lots of, uh, bioinformatics is a very evolving field and there are versions changing all the time and then things need to be updated to be comp uh, interoperable with each other. And we, we both in Bioconda here on the bottom and Condaforge at the top have infrastructure to facilitate this. Basically we have bots of various kinds, so little Python programs that just scan for things being updated. They update Pyth uh, GitHub repositories. These trigger lots of continuous integration processes that then build all these, project, these uh, uh, packages, deploy them onto the cloud automatically. And for us over in the Bioconda community here at the bottom, we upload containers automatically for Singularity and Docker. Uh, of, again, of everything we build. And this is done for you. You don't have to come up with any infrastructure for building all of this stuff or deploying all of this stuff. It's done, it's there, it's free. Go ahead and use it. And like I said, it's automation is great. So we started updating everything for R3.6 on Tuesday of last week. Uh, this at the top, it was the Condaforge status of that. There, it was updating about 1,700 packages from CRAN. Uh, started on Tuesday. I took the screenshot on Friday. It was about halfway done. And then we finished the other eight, 900 over the weekend. So we finished up last night, actually. So 1,700 packages in yeah, a little under a week. So that's pretty impressive. And on the bottom, we're updating Bioconductor as well. It's a little slower process. They're a little, take a little longer to do, but it, even then, another week or two, it'll be totally done, all of Bioconductor. Uh, but of course, we're not just some weird team of people some place. We're everyone. You are us, we are you. Um, anyone can contribute. We're open to everyone. Biocon itself has 700 plus contributors to it, 550 or so members. Um, if you're a tool developer, release your tools here. I can tell you from experience, it will make your reviewers a lot happier because usually the first thing reviewers complain about is that they can't install your software. Um, and that usually leads to a nice rejection from them. So if you uh, deploy your stuff via Conda, your reviewers won't complain about it. And also, I can tell you from experience, your end users won't complain as much about uh, installation issues. It makes everyone's life a lot easier. So thanks to you, thanks to all of the Bioconda contributors. This is maybe the first third of them. The, the thing that generates the little images stopped at, I don't know, 200 some odd. There are a lot of people. Uh, I'll take questions later, but usually the first question is, the, is why is Conda so slow? And that's the answer. So you don't have to ask me about that, I've just answered it. So thanks. <laughs> Awesome, great. Thanks, Devin. Next up, Sarah Bryn Rosenthal. Uh,